Good morning, church. So glad that you've joined us today. If you haven't liked the church's Facebook page, go ahead and do it now while we're watching so you can stay informed on what's coming up in the next few weeks. Stay connected with us online for some devotionals coming up throughout the week, new worship music, and some different ways we can still be serving our community. Even though we're in our homes this morning, we're no less of a unified church than we were when we met all together. We're so glad that you're here to worship with us today. The church has left the building. Can't wait till we can be back in the Lord's house all together as one body. But until that day, we're going to be worshiping as one body in a different place in our homes. So um, worship with us this morning as we sing together, whether you're on your
porch or your couch or your bed, wherever it is, it doesn't matter. I just want to say a prayer over you all right now. To all the saints who are at the church in Peaster who are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us all. In all wisdom and insight, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him. Amen to God's word. So sing with us this morning as we, uh, as we make the name of Jesus lifted high and above all other names.
nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Praise the
Thank you for our time this morning together. Let the word of Christ dwell richly within us this morning. Let the words that John speaks be the meat that we need to sustain us through the week. Let your words bring life. Uh, may they bring hope where there's hopelessness. Let them bring peace where there's fear. Let them let, the, let your word just speak life and light to all of us this morning as we hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good Sunday to you all. Today is the 29th day of March on a Sunday morning, and we're delighted that you're joining us on Facebook and on our website. So welcome to our services here at the Church in Peaster. God bless you for joining me this morning. I have entitled today's message, Crossing the Rubicon. Sometimes you may have heard that phrase on newscasts or, or in other ways, someone has crossed the Rubicon. But what does it mean? Well, as you know, I love history, especially Roman history. One of the reasons that I enjoy Roman history so much is because it was at its apex that Jesus, our Messiah, was born. He was brought up under the influences of the Roman Empire, under even Pilate and, and Augustus back in Rome was the Caesar, Herod Agrippa. All of these are important. Bernice in the book of Acts, Agrippa II, uh, Nero, Claudius, uh, different emperors that came down the line. But in order to understand what, what today is about, we need to cross our spiritual Rubicon we need to get into some history this morning that'll help you understand where we're going. It really has to do with trusting God in difficult times. One of the most amazing things is that we, we, we don't understand Roman history, so we don't understand a lot of what the Bible's talking about. I remember 
in the summer of 1969, I was a teenager, and I remember watching from the moon, the black and white, terrible pictures as far as quality goes, but I remember watching Neil Armstrong standing on a ladder from live from the moon, about to take his incredible step off of that ladder onto the moon's surface. And what he said was, as he stepped off of that ladder was, if you'll remember his phrase, you know, this is one uh, small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Well, he was standing there, but what most people are unaware of is, his was not so much trust, his was a calculated risk. And what I mean by that is the greatest risk, I remember them talking about it, is they didn't know if the surface of the moon would support a man's weight or if he would just sink down into it and be gone like quicksand. They didn't know, nobody had ever done it before. So it was a calculated risk on the part of Neil Armstrong. Brave, no doubt about it. I don't think I'd have done it, but, in, but that was not faith. It was a calculated risk that we think the surface of the moon can support a man's weight. So when he jumped off, he really was, that wasn't, see that's, that's what a leap of faith is. It's really, a, in some cases, a calculated risk. And that's, and that's not what we're talking about here. Christianity is not asking us to take a calculated risk about anything. Real faith is crossing the Rubicon. So in order to understand real faith crossing that Rubicon, historically then, what was going on and what does it all mean? Let's go back to January the 11th, 5.30 a.m. in the morning at the Rubicon River, which is the northern border of the nation of, of Italy. If you know, Italy looks like a boot, goes down into the Mediterranean Sea. The Rubicon River runs horizontally at the very top end of the boot. They had what they called a Cornelius Magistatus Law. The Cornelia Magistatus Law in Rome said that if you were the governor of a province, you could not take Roman legions, soldiers, out of your province. But on this day, this was stepping over the line by Julius Caesar as he found himself again on January the 11th, 50 BC, 5.30 in the morning, waiting for the sun to rise. He was going to cross the Rubicon with only one legion, the 13th legion. Against him was Pompey the Great in Rome. He had multiple legions. Each legion consisted of 6,000 legionnaires at the time. Let's understand what's going on. The Senate had divided up, instead of going into a civil war over rulers, whether it was gonna be a republic ruled by the Senate or by an emperor, the, the, the senators in Rome came up with a compromise. And what they compromised, there were three men vying for, for power in Rome. One's name was Crassus. So they gave Crassus the eastern side of the empire. His empire ran from, from Greece, roughly over through Crimea, and then down into Syria and Damascus, Jerusalem. And he, he had that whole area, that was his province. That was the east side of the Roman province. In the center was Pompey the Great. He had everything just north of the Rubicon River, all the way up into Gaul, Germany, Switzerland, some of France, so he had, they gave him the central area to be the governor over. And then there's Julius Caesar who had the western side of the empire. Everything from, from Spain up into Portugal, up into parts of France, all the way up to Britain. And they tried to do this collectively to make each man happy. Well, Crassus was murdered, well not really murdered, he was killed in a war against the Parthians and beheaded along with his sons. It was a great loss for Rome because they lost six or seven legions that day, each legion consisting of 6,000 men. The Parthians, modern day Syrians, attacked them in the deserts and slaughtered them all. That only left two leaders. It left Pompey the Great and it left Julius Caesar. A civil war was coming and they all knew it, but little did they realize that Julius Caesar was standing at the Rubicon River, 
with one legion, the 13th Roman Legion, to cross that, once you cross that line, you are deemed an enemy of the state. It is the very same thing with Christianity. Once you cross that spiritual Rubicon, once you say to yourself, I'm going to follow Jesus, I'm going to walk with Jesus, it is no longer a leap of faith, which is a calculated risk. It is crossing the Rubicon. You become an enemy of the state. Well, who is that enemy? It's Satan and his demons. It's the world. It's you become his enemy. So it takes a lot of, a lot of determination. Julius Caesar had a saying. He said it in Latin, but I'll give it to you in English. And this was his saying on all things. Audacity, audacity, always audacity. George S. Patton, the general who was going to help out with the invasion, the Normandy invasion after it had happened, was talking to his troops in 1944. And he quoted Julius Caesar and he told his army just a few days before D-Day, audacity, audacity, always audacity. There's just not a lot of audacity in Christianity anymore. We're taking, we think faith is a calculated risk. Well, maybe I can do it, maybe I can't. Maybe I'll be safe, maybe, I, maybe I'll go to heaven, maybe I won't. Faith is not a calculated risk. Faith is audacity to cross your Rubicon. It's also interesting to me as I looked at this this last week that rivers are boundaries. They are just normal boundaries. You have the Nile River. You have the Euphrates River. You have the Jordan River. It's not about the length, the size of the river that you're going against. God is calling his true disciples to have audacity, to have bravery, not take a leap a blind leap of faith onto that sand, it, it probably will hold you. That's not, that's not faith. Real faith is crossing the Rubicon. You can't have it both ways. Jesus said, my disciples are those who do my Father's will. He said, I do my Father's will. Jesus was using audacity. What does audacity mean? Let's define audacity right now. It means a bold and complete disregard for normal restraints. I'll read that again. A bold and complete disregard for normal restraints. Are you, is your walk with Jesus that way? Or are you still walking with a calculated risk called faith? Faith is audacity. Audacity is something bold, it's something outrageous, it's me stepping over, crossing that line from Gaul, like Caesar was gonna do on January the 11th, 50 BC, with one legion. And at 5.30 in the morning, he did the most audacious thing. He entered Rome to take control of the whole empire. Jesus talks about the audacity, the audacity of what it takes for people. It's a fight. It's a war. It's a struggle. It's difficult. But and when people, but when you tell a person that, they still think along calculated risk. Well, maybe I can. Maybe I'll try this. You don't try Jesus. You receive him and you cross that spiritual Rubicon, which says, I'm not going to live my old life anymore. I'm not going to put up with the world's with the world system anymore. I'm not going to bow down to the authorities and the rulers and the princes and the principalities of this world. I'm going to have the audacity to cross that Rubicon. I'm going to cross. I'm going to build a bridge and cross and that takes so much audacity. I have a quote that I would like to share with you this morning and here is the quote. Personal failure or spiritual failure in a person's life can only be blamed on a refusal to cross your own God-given Rubicon. Well, 
Brother John, if, if I cross now, what will my friends say? Who cares? Be audacious. Brother John, if I cross that Rubicon, what'll happen to me? Who knows? Brother John, what, what, what will people say of me? I don't know. See, that's real faith. Faith is not calculated risk. Faith is audacity. Paul, in his, the Apostle Paul, writes of this audacious attitude that he had. And that's our, that's our scripture of the day. I have been, it's in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live by in my flesh, I live by faith, by audacity in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. See, that's audacious. I, Paul said later, I, in Galatians and other places, I have come to, to know this. The only thing I care about is the crucifixion of Jesus for our sins and a resurrected life. That's all I care about. He says that in Galatians 5.24, if you want to look it up. He also says it in Galatians 6.14. So let's just suppose that you're standing today like Julius Caesar did 2,000 years ago at the Rubicon River, January the 11th, 5.30 a.m., 50 B.C. Are you really willing today to say, I am going to cross the Rubicon. Not calculated, see calculated risk says, if I cross, I can come back. No, no, there's no coming back. The bridge will be burned. It will be all over. There won't, there won't be any, any doubt in your mind. I am convinced also that the church has forgotten audacity. She has forgotten, she wants comfort. She wants a way out. She wants a way that, that I can go back to the other side if I don't like what's on the Jesus side. I don't like being an enemy of the state. I don't like losing my popularity. But let me ask you this. Would you rather look good in the eyes of the other side of the Rubicon or do the will of the Father in heaven? That takes an audacious attitude. The, now, again, what, what changes? What do I have to do? Let's say that this is our Rubicon behind me. How do I get, to, but let's say it's a real river and deep and I can't cross myself. A bridge has to be built from this side of the Rubicon, my spiritual Rubicon, to the other side. That's what the cross does. The cross bridges that gap. I have been crucified with Christ and it is no, no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith, audacity in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. That is no one foot on, you can't have one foot on this side and then one foot on the other side. That is an impossible scenario. Let me encourage you to stop living by a calculated risk. It doesn't work. See, I had a person tell me several years ago that I, we were talking about faith and he said to me this was many years ago probably 20 years ago he said to me brother John I use faith he was talking about himself he said I use faith every time and he, and he was a salesman he, he, uh, he had to be on planes all the time airliners so he traveled extensively and this is what he said to me he said every time I get on an airplane I use faith I said no you don't no you don't you don't get on that plane by faith. What you're doing is taking a calculated risk. The odds are in your favor that you're gonna survive, that that plane will not crash. That's, and he, and he looked at me and he said, well, I never put it that way. He said, well, I always thought that it take, and he pointed at a chair in my office. He said, I always thought that it took faith to sit down in that chair and that it would hold me. I said, that's not faith. That's a calculated risk. The odds are in your favor that that chair is gonna hold you up. That's not faith. That's a calculated risk. And we are living today with calculated risk. Well, if I, if, if I go to church, maybe God will bless me. If I do this, maybe God will have favor on me. 
if I do this, maybe I'll receive more grace. That's a calculated risk. That is not audacity. Audacity says, just like Julius Caesar said, audacity, audacity, always audacity. Let me define it again. Bold and complete disregard for normal restraints. Here is our side of the Rubicon. There is the other side, the Jesus side, called the kingdom of God. It's a fight. And it, God is not asking you to take a calculated risk today. He's asking you to be audacious and to take that audacity and through real faith, cross the Rubicon. Faith, real faith, audacious faith, crosses any river that Satan will put in your way. You will always have obstacles. You will always have problems. You will, in this earth, on this world, you will always have things in the way. But be audacious. I, I want to pastor a church that's audacious, not, not just a simplified, simple faith, not just a calculated risk that everything's going to be all right. Listen, through this coronavirus right now, we do not need a calculated risk that everything's going to be all right. We need audacity to know in our hearts that we are God's people, that he's taking care of us even in a financial crisis, even in a, a, a situation where there is an infection applied to the whole world called the coronavirus. Calculated risk says, well, it's gonna be all right as soon as we figure it out and we do it okay and we'll get some medicines for it and we'll ice, that's calculated risk. We're just guessing, we're just hoping. Audacity says, my life is in God's hands. If I live, if I die, whatever happens, God has a provision for me. He has a provision for my spirit. He has a provision for my body. He has a provision for my family. And the church in Peaster on this 29th day of March, 2020, is not gonna be caught guessing. We are not gonna be caught under faith that's nothing more than a calculated risk. We are going to have an audacious faith. Satan has, I'll, I'll leave you with this this morning. Satan has a, a Cornelia Magistratus law. I'm warning you, the reason that it has to be audacious is because once you cross that Rubicon, you got a target on your back. Don't fear, do not fear. God will be with you. On behalf of the church in Peaster this morning, I know you're locked down. I know it's getting, I know it, you're becoming bored, but I want you to think about real faith, audacious faith, not, not just a calculated risk. Let's live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Let me also remind you that if you would like to send your offering, we're getting a lot of calls on how to do that. The simplest way is to put your tithe or your offering in an envelope, send it to the church at P.O. Box 90, Peaster, Texas, 76485. We check our mail every day. I'm also told that you can also give online. I don't know how to do that because I don't even own a computer. But if you'll get on TCIP Facebook, I'm told that they've made it very simple for you to give online this week. Keep your hearts in the right place. Think about this message today. Be audacious today. Speak life to your children. Speak audacity into them because that coming generation, the ones that you're sitting in your home with right now, they are the ones that are gonna have to be so determined, just like Julius Caesar was, so determined, so audacious, to step over that Rubicon. Because once you do, you'll never be the same. And God will look, look upon you with great favor. So until next week, God bless you. I love you guys. Be blessed. And may Jesus make you audacious. Hey church, we just wanted to say thanks again for joining us this morning. I want to remind you that we do have three ways to give. The easiest one being download the Church Center app and it walks you right through it. Another way is to get on our church website, thechurchinpeaster.com. And like Brother John said, if you want to do it old school and mail it in to the church's P.O. Box at P.O. Box 90, Peaster, Texas, 76485. You can do that too. We know that you want to be faithful in your giving in this time. And we love you all, and we hope to see you back and be together soon. But until then, 
the church has left the building.